Hey what up folks this is GK. So in this video I'm going to go over how you can use Ansible to manage your Windows servers. So mostly as you all know Ansible works very well with Linux uh, and it communicates to Linux servers using um, SSH. So in this video I'm going to cover all the basic important concepts that you have to learn um, how to use your Ansible to manage your Windows servers in the company and also the things that you have to uh, set up in the Windows Server and as well as in your Ansible node to manage the Windows servers. So if you are new to the whole Ansible, I would suggest you to go back to my previous video and learn a bit of Ansible, but I also highly recommend going through the documentation of um, Ansible. So the way Ansible works is it has a control node and it has the host of machines where you install the software and you manage the software. So that's why it is called the configuration management tool. Now one thing that to note which is important in Windows case is you cannot have Windows as a control node in Ansible. So Ansible always has Linux as a control node. For instance, if you want to manage your Windows servers, you have to control again from a Linux server. So that's why you see here it's control node where I have Ubuntu in my case, I'm gonna show you in the demo. And then you have Windows servers on the right side. Uh, for the illustration, I just put two, but you can have as many as you want. So in the Linux case, as you all know, the way it works is uh, from a Linux server, when it is trying to communicate to a Linux server, it happens over SSH. But in Windows case, it uses WinRM. Now what is WinRM? So WinRM is a management protocol used by Windows to remotely communicate with another server. And obviously the expectation here is that the control node can communicate to WinRM on its WinRM port. So now with all those basic requirements are set, uh, the control node can manage your Windows servers. So first things first, there are certain things that you have to do on the control node. The most important thing is you need to obviously have your Ansible installed. And there might be situations where you might have Ansible pre-installed on your Linux servers. But highly recommend that you make sure you always have the latest version or at least the version above 2.9. And I'm going to show you in the demo, there might be situations where you have Python 2.7, which is an older version of Python, or uh, there might be multiple versions of Python installed on your control node. And I'm going to show you how to work around that problem and if you and, and use Python 3 for your Ansible. So with that, the second requirement is have Python 3 installed. And you have to install PyWinRM, which is a Python package, and you will install that using pip uh, install pywinrm uh, and this is the command and this command is also well documented in the ansible documentation i'm going to paste the link in the description or if you're using python 3 if you have pip3 you can do pip3 install pywinrm which was in my case pip3 uh, so again it is not mentioned in the document but if you have python 3 you can use this command so these are the minimum requirements from the control node side so this way now you have the winrm package and you can now uh, use your python and WinRM to talk to the Windows server. Now on the Windows host machine, you have to do certain things as well. And most of the time, with the latest versions of Windows like 2016 and other SQL server, other Windows servers, you get WinRM by default. But if you do not have WinRM, you have to uh, create that WinRM listener and stuff. So again, there is a very good script that is there in the documentation. I'm going to go over the documentation in the demo. These are the basic requirements that you should have PowerShell 3.0 or newer version and .NET 4.0 to be installed on the Windows host. All right, so with that, I'm going to go over the Ansible documentation very quickly. I'm going to show you some of the key things. I'm going to paste the links in the description as well, but I'm going to show you the important commands. All right, first things first, like I was saying before, uh, if you have Python different versions, like in my case, I'm going to show you here, I'm using Ubuntu on Windows, uh, but it works the same way for your CentOS or you know RHEL. If you can see, I have Python, sorry, Python, you know, 2.7, I have Python 3 and 3.6 and all those stuff. So I have different versions of Python. Now the recommended way of installing Ansible is using pip3 install Ansible if you're using Python 3. That way it installs the latest version and also it will make sure that it's going to use the Python Three version. Now it happened in my case as well. I had Ansible installed using yum install. I think apt get install Ansible, 
but what happened was that it was using the older version of python so how do you know that so you can do ansible hyphen hyphen version and it's going to immediately show you what version of python it is using along with the ansible version so if you see here the ansible version is 2.10 and the python version is 3.6.9 so here if you see 2.7 or 2.6 though you have a python 3 then i would uninstall that ansible and install it the way it was mentioned in this document so that would fix that issue so the, this is the most important thing and make sure that you do this step because it's always better to use the latest version of ansible whenever you're dealing with windows servers especially so once the ansible is installed and you have the latest version and you know ansible is using the latest version of python the next step is to install pi winrm and this is the command for that again it is there in the document i'm going to do that I think it has built and it installed it again but you can verify the packages just to make sure that pywinrm is existing on your box all right so these two are the steps for the control node so this ubuntu is my control node the next and most important thing is you want to configure your host machine which is again my windows server and here i'm using my windows 10 uh, first things first make sure you have created a user who is admin user preferably because you want you want to if you want to run any ansible on target windows server you might run some administrator uh, things like you know installing tomcat or managing the windows server so in my case what i have done was i created a ansible user there are documents around how to do that but you can go to the control panel user settings and create a local uh, user for this demo i have created an ansible user so after the user is created the next thing that you want to do is open the powershell and open the powershell in using uh, run as administrator so this is most important thing so once you run it as an administrator it opens uh, in in the system 32 so for instance if i run powershell without doing that uh, just here like this then it would open in my uh, user directory but if you're doing it as an administrator you will see option here on the top as administrator and here you have to run the commands that i was showing you in the slide and again go back to the documentation the first command is setting this one i have done it in my box already and this one exactly copy the same commands one by one and run the whole thing so after you run this thing then you will get an okay uh, end of the line so that means that you know you are all set from the windows server and now i am not running the other dotnet commands because i already have the latest version of dotnet but if you do not have follow the steps in the document here for those things okay so now it's time to test my windows server I mean, we can do a simple install so first things first things first we need to make sure that uh, we have the windows host set so i'm gonna set that in etc host um, etc ansible host and here if you can see I just put an interpreter here but it is not required uh, if you do not if you have any issue you can set that here but if not the main thing is you're going to set the windows host you're going to give any name here the block and this is the ip address of my windows host machine and these are the variables that are going to be used for this windows host so that's why you mention it as win and variables and ansible underscore user ansible underscore user is the user that i have created in my windows box and ansible underscore password is password it is not recommended to put the password as a variable here but just to show you as a demo i have just put it here the recommended way whenever you're working in a company or uh, anywhere is to either use a secrets management like vault or at least pass this password while running the ansible through the variables in the command where you do not have to you know show to anybody so that's the recommended way but it is not recommended to put the passwords in any files that's a thumb rule please always remember that but anyways for this demo i've just put it here and ansible underscore connect connection is uh, the winrm this is how i'm gonna connect to my windows server and ansible winrm server certification we do not want to use any ssl certificates here i'm ignoring that part now we can do a quick test by running ansible windows and minus m is module and here i'm gonna ping windows 
I'm gonna do Windows ping so win underscore ping. If you're using Linux, you might have know the command it is just ping without win underscore ping. So if this command is working, then you're all set, meaning your winrm is working and you know you're perfect to go. So as part of just uh, doing a sample playbook, I have created a, a sample playbook where I'm mentioning host is Windows that we have mentioned in my host file and gather facts. I'm not going to gather any facts here. The task is I'm going to install a chocolatey package on Windows 10 on my Windows. And then name is equal to this is the name of the package and state is present. So this is again these steps are also documented in ansible if you are not aware of uh, chocolatey it's like a package manager it's like your yum package manager in linux it's a very handy tool a uh, package manager because once you install chocolatey then all you have to do is install you know tomcat if you want to install tomcat on windows you just use choco install tomcat it's very easy on windows and it's much better to use chocolatey when you're whenever you're using ansible all right so i'm gonna use this um, Ansible playbook to install chocolatey on my Windows server. So save it and then you're going to run Ansible hyphen playbook and then the playbook name which is choco underscore install.yml. Okay, so since I have done it before, it says okay, but in your case, it would say changed is equal to one if it is trying to install for the first time. If you do any number of times, as you know, because of the nature of the Ansible, the way it is, uh, that's why it is called as idempotent. So any number of times you run it, you're going to just see the status uh, without reinstalling the whole software. Okay, so now I have to verify if it has successfully installed. So for that, I'm going to go to my PowerShell again. run it as an administrator and gonna do I'm gonna do choco search tomcat All right so I have chocolatey installed and I was just searching for a package using chocolatey if there is something called tomcat and I see a tomcat version now you can use choco again in ansible modules to install tomcat all right, so that's all for this video and thank you so much for watching let me know in the comment section if you have any issues uh, following this video or give it a try at your home and let me know if you have any issues with that if you like this video give it a like and as always please do subscribe to my channel thank you